Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to talk about what might be the best motorized kayak ever. Fish on! That's a tow, brother. Golly! All right, guys, so before we jump into today's video, a lot of folks are going to be like, man, your title said best motorized kayak ever. And a lot of that stuff is subjective. So I'm going to talk to you about why I feel like that may be the case and really leave it up to you to make the decision. Uh, but I will tell you that this thing hits two criteria that most people consider when they go to buy a motorized kayak, probably better than any other motorized kayak on the market. Now, there are going to be pros and there are going to be cons, and I'll talk about all of those. So let's first talk about this boat from an overall standpoint. Obviously, this Sportsman Autopilot 120 has been on the market for a while. For the most part, I like to try to get a kayak early in its life cycle to do a review. But it's worked out really well for me that I didn't get a chance to review this Sportsman Autopilot 120 powered by Minn Kota until it had been on the market for a while because I've been able to kind of review some of the other videos out there. I've been able to try this boat a couple times for very little short periods of time. And now that it's been on the market for a while, I actually kind of get to come at this from a different, different perspective. So for those of you that are new to the channel, the way that I'm going to do kayak reviews moving forward is I'm going to do a boat overview an assessment based on my experience. And I've got a lot of experience in fishing kayaks, so I can tell you a lot about a boat without getting into it. The second part of all my videos is gonna be like a full day on the water. I'm not gonna get out there and paddle it or pedal it or motor it for like 30 minutes and then tell you everything about it. I'm gonna put it through the paces, fully rigged for a day of fishing, and then I'll give you my on the water review. Now, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna come back into a third video where I'll walk you through my final rigging recommendations, my overview, where my initial impressions may have changed after I spent a full day or multiple days on the water with it. But in this video, we're just gonna walk through the features and I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts on the Sportsman Autopilot 120. All right, so guys, I use an acronym and I think you could use the same acronym when it comes to deciding about buying a fishing kayak. And I, that acronym is SCRAPE. So before you scrape your money together, to go buy a new fishing kayak, here's the things that I think you should consider and in the order that you should consider them. The S in scrape stands for stability. And from all accounts and from my limited experience with this boat so far, stability is not uh, even a question. And stability and standability go hand in hand. I don't feel like a, a boat is a fishing kayak if you can't stand in it. And this boat has got a wide open cockpit, a U-Haul design, plenty of stability. So stability is not a concern. The next one is comfort, okay? And comfort is something that you just have to have. Uh, if you can't be comfortable in a fishing kayak, you're not gonna spend the amount of time you need in it to catch fish. So comfort is right there. Now, the next thing is rigability and reliability. And when I said earlier in the video that it's good that I'm getting to do this after it's been on the market for a while, the rigability is probably second to none. It's got plenty of track space. It's still got open spaces for you to customize it. It's got built-in flush mounts that you can use. And if you don't want them, you've got a huge tank well. So rigability is not a problem. Now, reliability, again, because this boat's been out on the market a while, the, the common uh, complaints that I've seen is some of the issues with wiring, but most of that comes from the person not taking care of it. And so from a rigging and reliability standpoint, I think this boat is, is top notch. Affordability. Now, affordability is the A, and this one is right at the top of that affordability window. And what I mean by that is the boat, as the package, as you see it here, comes in at $4,000. Now, when you add tax to that, and then when you add the fact that you've still got to buy a battery, this is really at that upper end of the affordability spectrum, and that's something that you're going to have to decide for yourself. But I did want to point that out. From an affordability standpoint, this is not a budget-friendly kayak for a lot of folks okay so this is at the upper end or pushing beyond the upper end uh, in most cases the p is performance and so what i want to talk about with performance is the way that i rate the boats is how does it perform based on how it was designed in other words you can't take this kayak and compare it to a sea kayak and say it doesn't paddle as fast it doesn't do this this boat was designed to stand in it was designed to carry a lot of gear. It was designed to be motorized. So therefore the stability had to take into account the weight of the angler, the weight of the battery, the weight of the motor. And I think it hits every performance category perfectly. Now, if you take this motor out and you decide to paddle this boat, it's gonna be on the lower end of the performance spectrum. And then the E in the scrape 
acronym is everything else. Everything else means transportability, storage ability. What little things did they think of that don't fall into any other category? And for me, the E also stands for electricity. They did a really good job of outfitting this boat for electrical applications that saves you the time, energy, effort, and expense of figuring out how to get wiring into or out of the hole. So I think that's a pretty big bonus. Um, the other part of the E is that transportability thing. So because it is heavy, because the motor is a little bit cumbersome, it's one of the more challenging boats to, um, to transport. In fact, for my On The Waters Innovations trailer, I'm having to have a, a dedicated riser made to, to transport this boat because of the shape of the hull. So not a big deal because by and large, if this is your primary boat and it's your only boat, you're gonna, only gonna have to consider that one time and then you're ready to roll. And this boat is just super easy to slide in the back of your truck, strap down and go fishing. Now let's get into the features of the Sportsman Autopilot 120 by Old Town, powered by Minn Kota. All right guys, so before we jump into the bow stern walkthrough, let's talk about the specs of this boat. The Old Town Autopilot 120 comes in at 12 feet. That's what the 120 stands for. And it's 37 inches wide. The boat fully rigged, weighs 152 pounds. That's motor, seat, everything that's included with the boat. Old Town's website says that the motor system itself, the removable pod, comes in at 24 pounds. So that leaves the hull with the seat at 128 pounds. Without the seat, it's 122 pounds. A lot of people are going to think that's on the high side. But when you have a boat with this many features, I think Old Town did a great job of making sure they had plenty of plastic so that the hull doesn't flex and the boat's going to stand up to the abuse that you put it through. So don't be scared of that number. If you're going to fish out of a motorized fishing kayak, they're going to be heavy. So I think Old Town hit the sweet spot with the weight and the setup. Now, one thing that Old Town also did a great job of is rating both the total capacity and the usable capacity of the boat. And that's something that not a lot of manufacturers do. And it's something that not a lot of anglers think about. So they rated the total capacity at 558 pounds, but they rated the usable capacity at 400 pounds with a 45 pound battery. And then they updated their website later with a 331 pound usable capacity with a 75 pound battery. Now, most of us are gonna fall somewhere in the middle. And so you're just gonna have to make a determination of the capacity yourself. But according to the Old Town website, and we'll, we'll go to the smaller side. So with a 75 pound battery, you're gonna have a 331 pound usable capacity. Now that's you, your dog, your gear, your rod, your reel, all that stuff. So you're gonna have to take that into account when it comes to deciding about purchasing this boat. Now let's get to the walkthrough. All right, so starting up front, they've got a really nice rounded off nose with the handle that is super comfortable. It's easy to pick up this boat and you need a sturdy handle when you've got a heavier boat like this. That's gonna be ideal for tying handles too, for strapping the boat down, for towing or getting towed. Uh, so I just like a really nice handle and I like a handle that's in line with the boat. They're a lot easier to carry than the ones that are crossways. And uh, when you get back to the stern, you'll notice that they put two uh, hand holds in there, which is also awesome for a heavier boat. These little cutouts right here are cool because if you're using a longer rod, if you're using a musky rod, a saltwater rod or something like that, it actually lines up with these pockets back here so that you can lay bigger rods off to the side. It doesn't interfere with your pedals and it doesn't interfere with the operation of the motor. So that was a really smart, uh, cool thing that they did to line that up with those little rod pockets uh, in the back. Now I'll talk about this when I get to the pros and cons at the end and why this is such a big deal, but it's awesome that they included this forward access hatch to allow you to access the inside of the hole, both to get in the hole and to get stuff out of the hole. So that's a really cool feature. The way that they lock this motor in is super clean. It's smooth, it's easy. You've got this cord you pull in the back and when you pop that up, it allows the motor to just pop right up. Now, you're gonna have to align the prop but for the purpose of this demonstration, I wanted you to show you guys how the boat comes directly from the factory. So that thing just pops right up. When you get ready to put the motor back down, you simply pull that cord, which is a lot easier from the seated position. And then when you get ready to take the motor out, you grab the shaft right here, pop this loose, and the motor comes right out just like that after you detach your raising and lowering mechanism. So the motor unit just comes out just like that. One thing that I'll recommend is if you get in the habit of not disconnecting this before you take the motor in and out, you're probably gonna cause yourself problems. So always, always, always disconnect your wiring before you take the motor out of the boat. We'll talk about this in the pros and cons at the end, but I'm gonna leave the motor out for the purpose of the rest of this demonstration, just to kind of show you how this boat is laid out. So before we move past the motor, I wanna point out something that's really cool that Old Town does, not only for this boat, but for several of their boats. If you're gonna use the boat without the motor, they included this cool little 
uh, access cover that's going to allow you to block that hole off because you don't want water spitting up in your face. And so again, if you decided to use this boat without the motor, it's really nice to have that blank off plate. And they did a good job of integrating a place to stow it back here in the seat. We'll talk about that when we get to the tank well. Overall, everything about this boat is awesome. This little magnet plate right here connects with the uh, motor and so that way when you raise it up it automatically shuts it off in case you bumped the remote control left it on forgot about it and so they've thought about dang near everything <laughs> that you need to think of if you look inside the mount right here they have this little electrical access port to run depth fire, finder wiring lighting wiring and things like that and then they've got one on each side so that you can run wiring power and your transducer cords to your electronics which is in my opinion, something that every manufacturer should consider doing right out of the gate. So kudos to Old Town for including these little electrical access ports. I think that's pretty awesome. Now, moving back to the cockpit, you'll notice that it's got a wide open cockpit. I'm a big fan of wide open cockpits. I love the way that they gave you plenty of standing room, both in the low position and in the high position of the seat. A lot of boats, when you go from the high position to the low position, you lose a lot of that deck space. So I think they did a great job of leaving you plenty of deck space so that even in the lowest position, you still have plenty of room. Now, I like the fact that they included these oversized tracks that are super easy to adjust. Maybe the easiest to adjust of any kayak that I've used. And I like the fact that they've got a little bit of grip on these pads and that it's super comfortable and that it's angled forward so that your foot's in a natural position. So good job on including a very usable, very comfortable, and more importantly, a very rigid locking, not something that's gonna slip steering system. Now, speaking of steering systems, I was gonna talk about this at the end, but I'm gonna talk about it right here. When I made the declaration at the beginning of the video that this might be the best motorized kayak ever, here's why I said that. I'm a big fan of using motorized kayaks and steer with my feet. That's why for years I've used the Torquedo system because I like the motor to be in the back, but mostly because I like to steer with my feet. A lot of people who like bow mounts in the front like the ability to stand up and fish and use the remote control to steer the boat. So right here, before we go any further, this is probably where I think this boat out of the gate, off of the shelf from your retailer, Arriving at your front door is the best motorized kayak on the market because it's the best of both worlds. Meaning, with the motor being midship, you've got the autopilot control, you've got spotlight control, and you've still got the ability to set that motor on a low setting, not have to worry about changing power settings or steering with the motor. You can get back to hands-free fishing and use your feet to steer. Not all bow mounts work that way. And to me, that's the reason that I've kind of steered away from bow mount motors in the past. I do like to stand up and fish, but I'll turn my motor on slow and use my feet to steer the pedals or I'll just angle the boat to get the maneuverability that I get. So that's how I've kind of split the difference. So I think Old Town knocked it out of the park where you have the motor integrated into the hull. It's already ready to go when you get it from them. You don't have to go out and find a bunch of piece parts and you get both remote control when you're standing, you get spotlight when you need to hold position, and you can still steer with your feet when you're putting it on a low power setting and working your way down a bank with a spinnerbait, buzzbait, crankbait, or something like that. All right, so let's talk about a couple of clever uses of space in the autopilot cockpit layout. So first and foremost, they've got these little pockets on both sides where you can stick your little tackle boxes in there. I like the fact that these little waterproof tackle boxes that I use from Plano, when they put in there, they actually kind of wedge in. So if I ended up you know, flipping the kayak or something. I don't have to worry about that coming out. You've got awesome little pockets here for tools or saw plastic packages folded in half or whatever. So there's really intelligent storage in there. It also works as a great little handle if you need to move the boat around or something like that. And because of its proximity to the track, you could throw a tether or something onto the track. And it's just a really smart design. Now, I do need to clarify one thing that was brought up in the video. And that's that they created this cross member setup for your catch board. Now, in the video, Ryan Lilly talks about using a catch board when he's actually using a hog trough and talks about a smart way to store it, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now, I am not a big fan of having your board up here. In fact, on my Catch-22 Challenge, I've had the board up high like this. I've had fish flop off of the board and it's cost me, but even though 
I don't like to use it this way, having the setup actually makes it work great the way that I do use it, which is to cock it off to one side like that and it gives it a nice little ridge. Whichever way you decide to orient it, it holds your catchboard in place. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> like that. And I'm a big fan of taking the photos like that because the fish's weight is helping keep its mouth closed. So I really do like how this holds your measuring board and it holds the catchboard in this configuration. Now, one thing that they talk about in their walkthrough video is that they've got this intelligent storage for the catch board. But the problem is with this new Catch X, it's wider than the original. It's wider than the hog trough. And so therefore it actually doesn't store in this little slot here. But if you're using the uh, carbonite board or if you're using the hog trough, then you can slide it under there and there's a little slot right there that allows you to do that. Most major tournament organizations are not allowing the hog trough anymore. Uh, they've either gone to the, the Catch X or the Catch Carbonate. So I, def I definitely uh, wanted to point that out. But that being said, there's so much storage on this boat you'll be able to find a really easy place for your catch board. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I did want to at least point that out. Now, this boat again is set up the way that I got it from the factory and that's the way I'm gonna walk you through it. I do love the fact that they've got drink holders on both sides. For a long time, I was kind of an anti-drink holder guy, but I do like them for both throwing soft plastics in and having the ability to either throw your coffee cup your Nalgene bottle, your Yeti tumbler, you know, whatever. And then before you really pull the seat out and look underneath that, I also want to say that there's another feature of this boat that when it came out in kayaks in the beginning, I was like, I thought it was stupid, just to be honest with you, which is a forward facing flush mount. I really did. I thought it was a dumb idea. But when you land the fish and you've got somewhere to just stick your rod and you can get the hook out, you can measure your fish, you can do all that. It is a very smart, awesome place to stick your rod and if you happen to be catfishing or if you happen to be drifting a bait or doing something like that and you're putting the motor in reverse and steering with your feet it could also be a great place to stick a rod for either long lining reverse trolling sitting in current things like that so i've got to go back on myself and say i like these forward facing rod holders and i like the fact that because some people are left-handed and some people are right-handed they put one on each side so let's pop the seat out. Before I pop the seat out and go through the stuff that's underneath it, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the fact that they have both the high and the low position by simply popping that thing in there. And they've got a great place in the back to lock it down. And so I really like the way that they integrated this into the hull. It locks in place, it's not coming out. It's not gonna have a lot of slop and noise in it. I would recommend putting some kind of padding back here on the back of your seat if you're going to use it in the high position because it does get kind of loud. Get a piece of traction pad, you know, get a piece of uh, mouse pad or something like that, cut it out, glue it down there with some monkey snot or some epoxy or something like that and that'll really quieten that up. In the low position, it doesn't seem to be a problem. In the high position, it seems to kind of rattle around a little bit and that sound being transmitted through the hole can really spook fish. Now, on the left side of the seat, they have a cavernous storage pocket over there. You can put several of these smaller tackle boxes in there standing up. You can put three or four sitting down. You can put your oversized boxes there, your lunch, what have you. And then they've got this dry compartment on the other side that you can put stuff like your cell phone, your keys or whatever. It really does have a rubber gasket and it really does over center and it tightens down when you lock it. So even though I say that there's no such thing as a dry compartment on a fishing kayak, this is probably the closest that I've seen. And I also think it's smart that they threw this little bungee on the top for sliding things like pliers and like stuff like that to make that unusable, unused space usable. So really smart use of space on both sides. You know, kudos to the folks at Old Town for that design. I also like the fact that they used the underseat storage to incorporate the battery. Now, we're gonna talk about battery selection and recommendations when we get into the on the water portion of this video of, of this review but i want to give them a big shout out for the fact that they included the wiring everything's ready to go it goes straight to the motor it's ran internal to the boat all you have to do is connect your battery and go and so again the way that this thing comes configured everything is ready to go you just connect your battery connect your your fitting right here to the side of the boat it powers the fitting in the front and everything's good to go they throw the prop inside of here and the kill switch actually doubles as your prop wrench again really smart intelligent use of space and pulling double duty uh, for the things that you're going to have on the fishing kayak i also like the fact that they included 
what you need in a tackle box. It's smart, right? Your fisherman tackle boxes just work. You've got your, again, you've got your kill switch. And a big reason that I've steered clear of other motors in the past is that the Torquedo integrates the safety kill switch. Most other motors didn't, but they've done a great job of setting this thing up to where you've got a dead man switch or kill switch integrated right into it. And again, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Having your kill switch double as your prop wrench is just really smart. They included some extra fittings, some extra electrical series covers. They included, you know, your lanyard for your release, and they even included a side paddle holder that screws on to the side of the boat, which we'll talk about again when we do the full setup for the full day on the water. This is really just my initial impressions overview walkthrough. The remote is included. It's inside an ESD bag that's going to keep it from getting damaged and shipping. It's nice and substantial. I like that rubberized grip on the side. And from what I've seen from all the videos, it's super easy to use. But we're going to get into that when we get into the on the water functions and how that's how this boat performs. So I'm going to throw this back in the tackle box. We're just going to keep working our way back. All right. So again, smart battery box setup, nice and clean. This additional hatch right here is smart for a couple of reasons. One, if you put a large capacity battery in here, some of the bigger ones aren't gonna fit. So you can put a small capacity battery there, use it, and then you can slave it to a larger battery that you simply put inside this bigger hatch right here, and you're gonna double your power. You also have just access to the rear of the boat for any type of rigging or whatever that you need to do. So again, really smart use of space. Uh, in fact, if you take the battery box out, which I don't recommend, you can get a little bit bigger battery in there, but you're gonna have to rewire the whole system. And I just feel like you should use the battery that was included, and I, or, or the battery box that was included because it's just set up super smart and it makes it really easy to set this boat up to get out for a day on the water. Now, I talked about how they secure the seat in there so you don't have to worry about it coming out during transport. You don't have to worry about it falling out if you flip it. You lock your seat in, you take this buckle, go around, hook it to that buckle, and cinch it down. Just like that. Simple. Let me throw this back in here real fast, guys. All right, guys, so actually, before we move on, let me actually tell you how I plan to power my Autopilot 120, and I'll give you an update on it if it doesn't work out. So the way I plan to power my unit is I'm gonna put a Dakota Lithium 60 amp hour battery in there. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is it still leaves me room for a 10 amp hour battery that I can set up for running my cameras, accessories, and things like that. Now, a 135 won't fit in this spot, but a 100 amp hour battery will. So let me tell you my logic behind going with the 60. The 60 amp hour battery should be plenty for about 99% of folks out there for a full day efficient. If you're a tournament angler and you're covering a lot of water and you're running real hard, or if it's super hot or if it's super cold, you may need that second battery. So the cool thing about using the 60 is you could buy a second 60 and you're gonna end up with 120 amp hours, not quite 135, but more than 100 and you're gonna have the flexibility that God forbid that one of your batteries dies, you still have that backup battery. So Dakota Lithium is the most reliable battery I've ever used, but everything electrical can fail. So I'm gonna go with 260s so that I have that backup just in case I need it and so that I can get a little bit more capacity than the 100, but still have that redundancy. So if that makes sense. So again, I did wanna point that out because again, I will let you guys know what I think. Is the 60 enough? Do you need to bump up? And if so, should you have two batteries? So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna kick this thing off by setting up my 60, connecting it, and we're gonna get on the water. Uh, I don't know if I did a good job of pointing it out, so let me point it out again. The lid also comes wired where you just take this plug, plug this in right here, and then the power goes to the front. So when you plug your motor, all of the wiring is run internal to the boat. So again, great job from the folks at Old Town on the way that they've got this thing rigged. All right, so when I talked about using this blank off plate in the front when you didn't have the motor in it, I said when I got back to the tank well, I'll talk about another smart feature. And that smart feature is they have this set up to where you can actually put this back here and make use of some of this unused space. On the 136 model, they also did a good job of integrating it into the bottom of the tank well so that you have a blank off plate for both. But we'll talk about that in a future video. Just like I spoke about before with the forward flush mounts, I used to never be a fan of flush mounts in the back coming from the manufacturer because I like to set the angle myself. That being said, the way that Old Town set this up, 
I'm really happy with it. I put some rods in it just to eyeball it, and I think it's great. Uh, I'm not going to be using this boat for going down rivers with overhanging brush for the most part, and if I do, I'll store my rods horizontal. But I do think that these turned out really nice. I could throw my Yak Attack leverage landing net in there. And one other thing that I wanted to point out is if you notice this little opening right here, there's a hole there, so you can actually connect a lanyard to that so that you can connect a lanyard to your rod. So really smart use of space, really smart design. Now this tank well is huge. Now everybody says they have a big tank well. Uh, Old Town says they have a big tank well. When I got the boat and it was in the packaging, I did not realize how big this tank well is. But So for the purposes of demonstration, let me pull these cords off and show you exactly how big this tank well is. Not only will it fit a Yak Attack black pack, either direction, either forward and aft or sideways with plenty of room on both sides, it will also fit an additional Yak Attack black pack. And this is the 16 by 16. You don't necessarily have to use a black pack, but if you do use a black pack, you've got the ability to put two black packs in the back of this tank well, rig it up, and you've got plenty of room. So if you've got a black pack and a cooler or whatever type of gear management system that you use, this tank well is gargantuan. Actually, I would have flipped this the other way, but you know what I'm saying. So again, huge tank well. I do love the integrated locking system. Personally, I would probably take this bungee a loose, put some Omni hooks on there because I'm a big fan of the Yak Attack Black Pack and use that to secure my stuff. But I love the way that they thought about having this bungee secure to itself. It's one-handed operation. So if you're holding something, you don't have to use two hands to do it. Again, clever design. And the tank well does not fill up with water with big dudes because of the way the boats balance, because of the width, because of the volume. So again, thank you, Old Town. Us big dudes, thank you. Another smart design feature is a lot of times you can't use as long a tracks if you're gonna use bungee because you have to leave room for the fitting, so you have to use a shorter track. So the drop down by raising this gunnel up allows you to have this bungee in there. It's level with each other, so one side's not pulling up and these things are constantly popping off, and it leaves you more room for your tracks. Now, I'm gonna throw the black pack back in one time and show you guys something that a lot of folks don't consider. So another smart thing about the way that they raise the gunnel in the back to elevate the tracks is it gets rid of interference when you put accessories on here with whatever your tackle management system is. So in other words, when these are down low, they always seem to get tangled. So the fact that they raise this deck up to give you more usable track surface and to deconflict it with your other gear management system was a really smart design. They also have probably the most responsive easy to repair, easy to deploy and redeploy and stow rudder on the market. So I'm gonna just direct your attention back to the front up here real quick. They've got this oversized lever. You reach down from the cockpit, you flip that thing down, you straighten your foot pedals up with your feet, hands free to line it up, and then you just flip it right back up. Again, when you're in the boat and you're holding the pedals, that thing hits that center spot every single time. Once you've got the bungee on here that this is secured, they also did a really smart thing by integrating a handle into the rudder. Only time will tell that with this big heavy boat and the bungee holding it down, if that handle's usable, but at least initially, I think that's a clever design and I think it's a really smart use of space. In addition to that, they did a good job of integrating your uh, power pole mount. Basically, there's inserts on one side. Not exactly sure why they didn't do both sides. Uh, probably has something to do with the weight distribution of the boat already. I'll tell you my opinion on that after I set this boat up, after I configure the boat, and after I get some time on the water. But the fact that you have the ability to put a power pole on one side is awesome, and I think the volume of the boat is plenty sufficient to support that. So guys, there it is. That is the front to back walkthrough of the features of the Autopilot 120. Now I'm gonna get into the pros and some of the no's. All right guys, so before we go, I wanna let you know at the end of the video, I will be flipping this thing over and doing a whole walkthrough for you like I'm gonna do on all my fishing kayak reviews. But let's get into the pros and the no's. Now, first and foremost, the pros. Probably the biggest one, and the reason that I think this boat very well may be the best motorized kayak on the market, all things considered, is 
you've got spot lock, you've got the ability to control it with the remote while you're standing, but you've also got the ability to steer with your feet at slow settings, or if you're trying to cover water and hands-free fish when you're in the seated position. So that's probably the best of both worlds. There's gonna be some trade-offs, and I'll talk about that when we get to the cons. The other pro is, is this boat is relatively fast for the way that it's designed, and part of that is because the weight of the motor is not out on one end, dropping the stern down or out on the bow, pushing the bow down. And so the hull was designed to work with this motor. So that's a big pro is from an efficiency standpoint, a range standpoint, and the boat being designed for the motor, that's a huge pro. The other pro is the way that this motor is set up, it is the easiest to deploy, the easiest to install, the easiest to remove, and the easiest to raise up while you're on the water and it has a safety kick up feature if you happen to run into something that's a huge pro the other big pro for this boat is it runs super shallow again most of the time i won't have already had experience in the boat but with my limited experience in this boat i could be on the highest setting running through six maybe eight inches of water and it chews up vegetation like it's not even there so those are the big pros now let's get into the nose Probably the most obvious no for a lot of people is gonna be the cost. The cost is a big barrier to entry. It comes in at $4,000 without a battery. So let me give you some battery parameters for consideration. If you're gonna go with a lead acid battery, you're gonna have a lot more weight and you're gonna have a lot lower performance in super hot weather or super cold weather where lithium does a better job of being more consistent. Lithium's gonna weigh less, but lithium's gonna cost more. So let me give you a couple of examples. For the most part, between a 55 pound and 75 pound lead acid battery is gonna give you the capacity that you need to run this boat. You're gonna spend somewhere between $250 and $400 to get that power. On the opposite side of that spectrum, with a lithium battery, you're gonna spend $599 on a, the smallest battery that you're gonna use, a 50 amp hour, $699 on your 60 amp hour, upwards of 1,000 on a 100 amp hour battery, and then if you're gonna get into using 260s or 120 or something like that to give you just like the most capacity to get out there and run all day long, you're gonna spend another $1,200 to get where you need to be for battery capacity. So again, probably the biggest no, no, definitely the biggest no of this boat is where it falls out at price point, affordability, and things like that. But when you consider what you get for the money and how much you could spend outfitting another boat to make it similar to this, I do think it's right in line with where it needs to be. Uh, again, I wanna applaud Old Town for making this boat as durable as it needs to be for what it is. That way you're not gonna end up with cracks, you're not gonna end up with stress fatigues, um, even with your bigger anglers out there. Now, another pro is spot lock. I cannot argue with that. Now, in certain conditions when it's super rough, spot lock is not ideal, but by the time it's not ideal, it's probably not ideal for you to be out there in a kayak. So spot lock is, is the jam. It really is nicer than I thought it was gonna be. And it really is, <laughs> it, it's usable. It's usable for holding position. It's usable for anchoring while you're doing something. It's just very usable. Wait a second, did I just flip to a pro while I was doing a con? I think I did. I guess what I was trying to say is, even though the expense is a con, what you when you consider what you get, especially Spotlock, kind of offsets it a little bit, and Spotlock is, so take Spotlock and throw it into the pro category, and we'll just call it good. All right, so, and last, but definitely not least, is worth considering, and I have to mention it, is weight. I think Old Town did a great job of making the boat as durable as it needed to be for all the features, but it's heavy. 152 pounds before you put your gear in it is heavy. Uh, it's not gonna be ideal for car topping. It's not gonna be ideal for portaging or dragging if you're by yourself. And by and large, you're gonna need somebody to help you move it for the most part, unless you get a cart, a dolly, a trolley, or something along those lines. And that can offset it. But then again, you're adding more expense to the price of the boat. But that's about it, guys. There are not a lot of cons on this boat when you get outside and you, if you get past the price point. And it's right there in line with other premium boats at the top end of the kayak fishing spectrum. Um, all in all, I can't wait to get this thing on the water. Now, let's strip this thing down, flip it over, and talk about the hull 
before we get it out on the water so I can tell you what I think I'm gonna experience when I get my butt in this boat. Actually, and again, I'm not trying to lump coal on this thing, but I do have one more con-ish, okay? This boat is sold as a motorized fishing kayak. For the most part, most states, anywhere in the country now, require that you have red and green navigation lights if you're gonna use a motorized fishing kayak before daylight, after dusk. And most of us are going to fish before daylight or after dusk, let's face it. So I'm gonna tell you a con and give you a recommendation at the same time. The con is that this boat doesn't come with navigation lights. One easy way that Old Town could have accomplished this is by just simply putting a red and green light on the bow, on the motor itself. That way it's powered when the motor's powered and integrate some type of way to turn it on and off if you're not using it. That not happening, the other thing you could do is you could mount your standard old school, old fashioned red and green navigation lights right to your little hatch here and just power it from the backside. Personally, what I'm gonna do for this boat especially when I get into using it pretty extensively, is I picked up this Yak Power uh, two-piece red and green light system. I'm gonna mount it right here on the side of the boat and I'm gonna run it internally and tie it in to the other wiring so I can power it from my existing battery setup. Uh, so again, con, sorta. If you're gonna sell a kayak as a motorized kayak, it should at least come pre-wired or the consideration for putting navigation lights could be there because let's face it, most of us are getting out before daylight and most of us are fishing after dark. And in the summertime, when you're sweating like I am right now, uh, you probably wanna fish at night. So red and green navigation lights, uh, pick up this two piece kit from Yak Power or just mount your old school navigation lights right there on the front. Now back to the hole. All right, so for all of my kayak reviews, I'm gonna start covering the hole and I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of the hole design within that discussion. Huge pro that they included the sacrificial kill in the design. Guys, back in the day, I used to fix these things so much that I was the driving force behind the first company that did this. So huge thumbs up to the folks at Old Town for putting this sacrificial kill on there. That way, if you do happen to drag through it, you just pop those two screws out and replace it. I do wish that this ridge right here had been a little bit lower because it just seems like to me that it's gonna prematurely wear right in this area. So even though you do have that keel, this seems like it's gonna potentially be an impact point, but I don't know that for sure. I'll have to get back to you. The double U hull, the way that they designed this thing is ample stability. It also brings the water into this funnel. These ridges bring it back together. So it does a really good job of performing as a motorized kayak. And again, this keel probably has a lot to do with that even though they have that oversized rudder, having this keel direct that water to the rudder is gonna increase your maneuverability. It's gonna increase that rudder responsiveness. So that's probably the reason for this. So again, kudos to them. Pretty much everybody these days has now gone to these tapered scuppers in the back so that the water is sucked out of the scuppers should you take on a wave or something like that. So bravo to the folks at Old Town for doing that. And then doing the double recess inside the scupper so that the lip on the inside of the scupper is not receiving any type of damage is also huge. And that extra little lip right there gives you some rigidity and it keeps those tubes from flexing. Okay, the way a scupper works is it's a tube going through the boat. And when the deck flexes, it flexes those scuppers. So they made the boat thick enough for one and two, they did a good job of recessing that scupper insert on the top and the bottom. That's really gonna avoid any type of scupper failures. Uh, again, solid ridge going down the middle you know, this double U-Haul, which is, I think is their trade name for it, is awesome. Coming on up to the front, this additional scupper up here is really huge because it's gonna allow that bow to vacate water faster before it gets back to the cockpit. And then having these four packs of scuppers is huge. Right where your weight is gonna be for your motor, as that motor is cycling on and off and putting pressure on the hull, they did a great job of stiffening that boat up right where it needs to go. Having that additional scupper there is gonna do a great job of stiffening it up. Putting another scupper right in the center not only allows you to drain your battery box, but again, it stiffens that boat up right where the angler is gonna be standing. 
It gives you a lot of rigidity coming on back, back here to where your gear management system is going to be. So getting that extra stiffness of those extra scuppers is just a huge plus for longevity and durability. So again, kudos to the folks at Old Town for doing that. And again, it's little stuff like this and the plastic that you have to have to support it that gets these boats in the upper side of the weight um, spectrum. So that's why I say the boat is as heavy as it should be because it's gonna be super durable. Now, another thing that they did a really good job of is, and I think this might be an industry first, even though I did try to convince other manufacturers over the years to do this, but the first place your boat hits the boat ramp is up here on the bow. So having this little sacrificial skid plate on the front is also awesome. Now, I wish they had taken it, carried it out onto the end and made it a little bit longer. Uh, I think it was like, you already knew what the problem is, but you kind of halfway solved it, if that makes sense. So love it. Just wish it had been a little bit longer. So again, bravo to the folks at Old Town. Now, last but not least, they did a good job of setting up your transducer mount. This transducer mount is gonna allow you to get anything except maybe structure scan and some of your bigger three-way transducers. Your, your cordage goes in right here that you can route to your unit, um, but they have a plate that's already made there. It's got two inserts into the hole. You simply take this plate off, screw your mount to it and then mount the plate back to the boat so again really smart in hole design a lot of geometry in this hole to keep it stiff to make it durable no hot spots or places where it's going to hit first and wear out except where they already addressed it and maybe at the leading edge of the back of this keel so all in all my initial impression of this boat is one i can't get it onto the water since this one's mine and really put it through the paces. I can't wait to figure out how I want to rig it, how, how much is too much, how much is too little, and really dial it in so I can tell you guys how I recommend outfitting your boat. I can't wait to do a longevity and range test on the different batteries so that I can provide that as part of my on the water review. I also am looking forward to the fact that we're giving this boat away at the end of the year as part of the Catch-22 Challenge. And so big thank you to the folks at Old Town for not only providing this boat for the review, but for allowing me to give it away to raise awareness for veteran suicide prevention and raise money for a great cause uh, with the folks at Mission 22. So if you haven't done so yet, please consider uh, joining in on the Catch-22 Challenge. I'll put the link down in the description box below. Now, there's a lot of information out there on this boat already. So before I get into the own water review, the rigging overviews and my suggestions, I'd love to hear your comments on things that you've seen that are smart, things that you wish uh, you had done to your boat or not done to your boat if you already own one. And uh, I can use that to provide a better on the water review and rigging and outfitting experience. So y'all let me know what you think and I'll see y'all in the next video.